my lovelies welcome back to another vlog um i hope you're all well and you're keeping safe from the freezing cold weather and the new variant of covid that is spreading rapidly i've just got back from my mum's um some of my aunties came to visit because obviously we're heading over to pakistan soon and mashallah one person after the other after the others come in so it's just non-stop um i am still unwell um I've still got the killer cough and I'm sipping on hot water and honey all the way from Pakistan. So this I think is working. Also, I've been making um, gawa out of mullein leaves, which my brother said, take. Now he's like a, a guru when it comes to all these like superfoods because he's got cancer stage four and he's managed to reverse it and gone into remission just by eating herbs and stuff. So I've just been sticking to herbal remedies Um the paracetamol's not working, the cocodamol's not working, the amoxicillin's not working, the prodesalone isn't working. Um, what else am I taking? Inhalers. Four stashes of inhalers are not working. So, may as well just cough my cups out. So going back to the title of the vlog, this is how I escaped death. And it's not a made-up story, it's 100% true. And I thought I will share this little episode of my life with you because I'm unique because I have a heart that is battery operated yes it was a broken heart but it got mended by thanks to Dr Kale <laughs> so yeah I have a pacemaker now keeping me alive so this is a story about me going back when I was 27 years old I'm 43 now and basically yeah I used to back out a lot I used to bang my hand, faint. If I used to, um, I don't know, split my head open, faint. I just fainted for fun of it. And um, the doctors always just said, oh, she's um, sensitive. There's nothing wrong with her. And then it was only once when my doctor wasn't in and there was a locum doctor and he thought, no. He looked at my eyes and he goes, I need to send you off for some tests. Now, God knows what he bloody seen in these eyes. It wasn't murder. <laughs> And it wasn't no ghost or anything. Don't know what he's seen. Maybe he's seen some, like, I don't know, behind. He, he flashed that thing in my eyes and he went, oh, I need to refer you. So anyway, let me take a sip of this one sec. Oh, that's divine. So he referred me and then I started having test upon test upon test. And during these tests, I had a loop recorder put in. So it was a, a surgery that I had. And it's like a, a size of a lighter that they put inside you. And that monitors your heart rate and all the activities going on with your heart all the time. And then they said, oh, we'll bring you back into clinic after six months and we'll download all the information and we'll find out what's going on. Why are you having all these blackouts and palpitations and hot sweats and restlessness and like irritable and lack of sleep. And even when I'm asleep, I'm like, I could hear my heart going. Dug, 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 dug. It was like I was constantly on a treadmill. That's the best way I can describe it. And you know the film Avatar? Have you seen it with all the blue people? Avatar, the film, it was basically like that. You know, when they smack that button and all of a sudden the Avatar just collapses. That was me. No word of a lie. When I was watching that film, I thought, oh my God, oh my, that was me. That was me. <laughs> it's like somebody's pressing the button and I'm dead. So anyway, um, they put in the loop recorder implant. I, I passed out the next day, didn't I? And that, thankfully, alhamdulillah, that loop recorder implant picked up on all the readings. And anyway, I was having long pauses in my heart. You know, like a normal person's heart beats 60 meets per minute. Dug, 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 dug. Mine would get laser and forget. And then when it would just forget, that's when I'd collapse. So I was having, it's called arrhythmia. So I was having long pauses of arrhythmia. And I actually died on paper for 60 seconds. And then they had to zip me. Yeah, they did the um, thingy budget defibrillate me so that's the story isn't it but then alhamdulillah as time went on they put a pacemaker in and then that went on for a few years then i was having wire issues and box issues and then i had to get the battery replaced and only recently last year i had um, the whole box and wires replaced and i've got a pacemaker on thursday check pacemaker pacemaker check on thursday so let's see how that gets on so that's my near-death experience that i've suffered but what i was going to say and the reason why i'm sharing this with you is always trust your gut instinct if you feel like there's something not right 
and the doctors are telling you you're fine, trust me, go with your gut because your body is telling you that there's something wrong. Alarm bells will start ringing. You need to get into those doctors and push for it. I know the NHS doesn't do funding for certain things, but um, honestly, I pushed and pushed. I didn't give up and I knew there was something wrong and I wasn't taking all these like weight loss tablets or anything like that that I could think that's triggering it it was nothing I was a fully focused career focused woman you know earning a living you know traveling the world wanting to do the best for my daughter you know taking my mum and dad abroad with me all the time yeah I was living the business I was living life living the business living life and I was just so career focused and then all of a sudden one day shut it it was like Allah Ta'ala just said full stop that's it no more you're resting now. Your body needs a rest. And I've not been working for 12 years now. And Alhamdulillah, bills still get paid. Rent still gets paid. There's food still on the table. But the sukoon, I have peace. I'm always in aches and pains. I've always got, you know, one of the main things is memory loss. I lost my memory. Can you believe it to this heart failure? I lost my memory. I don't remember Maham's birth much only when i've been reminded i don't remember a lot of my childhood but i do remember my failed marriage and i do remember um maham growing up but there's a lot of blanks in my memories and i feel that's a blessing as well because i don't want to remember the shit things in my life to be honest <laughs> i'd rather remember fun stuff but um yeah seriously guys just I know everyone's got health conditions. I'm trying not to blow my own trumpet and think, oh, look at me. And, oh, you know, I had a heart failure. And, rah, rah, rah. No, I'm only trying to share this because I feel as though in our community, we do ignore a lot of the things that go on with us. And we're like, no, you know, you have to get your treatment done. You can't not just be like, oh, hush, hush, people, look, you can get a mad hair. I couldn't give a fuck about look, to be honest with you. I've come to this point in my life where when I was in this house all on my own during COVID, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, going bonkers, yeah, no log came to my rescue. No rishtadar came to my rescue. Nobody had the audacity to drop any food after me apart from my mum. But no one else did, so... Mate, don't give a flying shit what people think. That's my attitude in life. Jo aap ke saad achha, aap uske saad bahut achhe ho. Jo aap ke saad bura, aap usse so mil bhago. That's my motto, and that's exactly what I do. So yeah, that was my near death experience, which I thought I'd share with you all. And um, the reason why I'm sharing that is because I don't know what else to share with you. <laughs> I put up a vlog last night, Maham's Dwai Khair. And she told me to take it down. She was like, Mama, please respect my wishes. I do not want to be on your YouTube. I don't want anything shown. So, so much for showing wedding to you lot. You ain't going to see that. <laughs> You're not seeing nothing, unfortunately. Not by me, not by choice. It's the bride that's 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 wishing for this not to go ahead. I've got to respect her wishes, and I? You can't just like think, oh, shut up. I'm going to do what I want. No. I am a respectable parent. I respect other people's wishes. And I get it. Not everyone's like me that just wants to put them out there. Omar, on the other hand, he's like, What happened to the world? YouTube? What happened to the world? I was like, Omar, just do it. Just do it. I'm different to you. different to We can't. Like, I'm, honestly, I'll tell you what, yeah. I'm such a drama queen, yeah. I wanted to go to drama school. I wanted to become an air hostess. I wanted to become an actress. I even got a place in drama school. Do you know that? And my mom and dad said, So I didn't get to fulfill my wishes. And now if I've got a platform like YouTube to show myself, why bloody not? Why not? You tell me that. Let me take another sip. Bear with. Oh. Mm. I never thought I'd say this, but I love honey and water. Boiling hot water with two big scoops of honey. Mm. So anyway, now Coco, no, he's biting foxes again. So yeah, um, I'm going to have to just like show myself. I can't show anything else. 
Omar's not coming to the wedding because he's got commitments over here. He's got work. We can't afford to take any time off work because we've got bills to pay. Committee, bills. <laughs> Rabbits to look after. So what me and Omar decided to do is go to Pakistan in, on Eid, Big Eid, um, so he can spend it with his family. But yeah, health is so important, guys, going back to health. My brother's got cancer at the minute. And, you know, I pray everyone who's got all these illnesses, these deadly illnesses, that Allah Ta'ala gives us all shifa. This is a test in itself. Our sins are getting wiped away. And Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing. I'm not complaining for one second. I am so grateful that Allah put me through this test. Um, what I'm not grateful of, being fat. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Allah gave me my dad's looks. He gave me good looks, actually, as well. I'd like to think I'm relatively good looking. Um, but he didn't give me the skinny jeans, did he? I've got the fat jeans. So if I look at food, it just it just attaches itself to me like bloody magnet. So, and the thing is, I've had knee operations as well. I've got torn cartilages on both knees. You know, I've got back issues. I've got a slip disc. I've got memory issues. I've got a swelling to my brain. A swelling to the brain. I've got um, a nerve a swelling, you know, since I've had the blackouts and whatnot. I've had a lumbar puncture done. That caused me a lot of issues. You know, I've had a lot of work done in terms of treatment. Um, when I say work, I mean like, you know, operations and whatnot. But Alhamdulillah, I'm still here. And I try and do what I can. I really can. And, you know, I'm, I'm not here to put anyone down. I'm just here to think onwards and upwards. You could be in a worse situation. Look at me. I was a single parent most of my life. I met Omar three years ago. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Mashallah. Allahumma barik. And he looks after me, my little Buddha. And I look after him. And we're just like an old pair. And it's like, he doesn't like me talking about my illnesses. And I think, Hi, Umar, if I'm the first time, then I'm going to come to my house. I'm going to come to my house. And he goes, I'm going to come to my house. And I'm like, Umar, I'm not going to die. And 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 I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. And I'm not going to die. 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 You know, like <laughs> I don't want to be lame next to a, a random man. Or a thought of Pirby at the Matomoko Katy, my Pelina, my past thirty six pesos, you know, to hum up Nika, but keep it passive, uh, will Pele Kalinga, Pucky Kalinga, Yampe Hamdon, and Nida Fanona. The things that we think about and talk about, honestly, it's mad. But you've got to, you've got to, haven't you? I'm not being buried next to anybody else, I'm sorry. Mind you, if Allah's got other plans, I don't know, but I wouldn't want to be buried next. I mean, I was like, Omar, look, you've got to be late in life, you have to be late in life. Now you've got to be late in life. So we often laugh like that. We've got to, honestly, because I think I'd go bonkers otherwise. And um, can you believe it as well? Can you believe it? I've actually got issues up there as well. Yeah. I had a nervous breakdown, didn't I, during COVID? I did. And I got sectioned, can you believe it? Yeah, because I was a threat to myself. So that's how low I was. And would you think of that? No, you wouldn't. But you know what? I've come a long way, three years. And a husband later, alhamdulillah, I'm happy. Dunya ne bada dhoka diya vi. Logo ne bada dhoka diya. Apno ne bhi aur gairo ne bhi. Kya kar sakte hai? But it's life. Allah Ta'ala unko maaf kare. Aur unko hadai de. Aur mere dil mein bhi thoda sa dalhe ke mein unko bhi maaf kar saku. Because I'm not a faith forgiving person. Not if you've done me wrong. Because I don't do anyone wrong. But I always get shafted one way or another. Mm? But one thing's for sure. My bunnies love me. And I love my bunnies. And the whole world could be against me. Everyone could leave me at one point in their life. But my bunnies, they always come running to me. And the way they smell at my feet and they want to jump up and get me to pick them up. Oh my God, it just makes me so mushy and like happy inside. And I think, Allah, thank you, thank you, thank you for creating rabbits because they're the best thing on the planet. I love them. So if anyone ever says, what's your favourite animal? Bunnies. I love bunnies and koala bears. And do you know what? I want a Shetland pony. 
if you don't know what a Shetland pony is, I'll, I'll, I'll put a picture up. The little miniature horses. I want a Shetland pony. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I want one. <laughs> I want a Shetland pony. So, yeah. So, inshallah, i um, have got another 10 days before I jet off to Pakistan. I'm not going to see my Omar for about two months, but there's nothing I can do. But thank the Lord for uh, FaceTime. We'll see you. Adi mulaqat ho jati hai. So, alhamdulillah for that. Um, so, yeah, as soon as I land, I'm just going to try and upload whenever I can because Wi-Fi is not great there. Because I remember last time we went, Pakistan, just about three months ago, my sister does YouTube as well. I'll, I'll, I'll tag her name in as well so you can give her a follow um so yeah she does like more cooking and islamic things and i'm more of the 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 the, the, the child <laughs> i'm the wild child <laughs> and yeah guys that's it my umar is at work and i just thought i'll have a quick chit chat with you and share my um near-death experience with you don't remember much of it to be honest with you all i just remember is just being pitch black, pitch black i'm waking up in a hospital with tubes everywhere i'm thinking what's going on where am i who am i <laughs> who are you <laughs> what am i doing here where's my child that killer cough it's awful it's like so tubunwilly in the throat so yeah guys um i've been waffling for 16 minutes so I just thought I'd share this story with you and um, yeah, inshallah I'll catch you in the next one. Omar's probably going to kill me when he finds out that I've uploaded this because he hates it when I talk about my health issues. I think he feels like I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to leave him now. I'm going to leave him now. I don't know to i But he doesn't like it. He gets a bit like... Mm. So I was like, Chalo, it is what it is, darling. I'm going to go when I'm going to go. But um, I've still got a lot of the world to see. I was like, Aladji, please, don't don't chuck my atama before I've travelled the world. Because <laughs> the world's a massive place. And there's always a chance to explore new places. I just buzz off it. New cultures, weather, people, how other people live, you know, food. You know, how people live in these little huts. I've always wanted to. And I want to go to the North Pole as well. Can you believe it? North Pole, I want to go there as well and live in one of them little igloos. I want to do all that as well. Because I remember when I was growing up, I had this colouring book. And I was colouring in this igloo. And I thought, I wonder how people live in this big circular thing. And it must be really cold up there. But I've just got this thing about wanting to go. I've been to Iceland before. But it was only a stopover when I was going to America. So I stayed about seven, eight hours. Um, and we just stayed in the airport. Speaking of stopovers, when you say, yeah, because behind me on this wall, what I'm going to do is put a map and I'm going to put pins everywhere of where I've been. And then I know which places that I've got left to explore. And then if you're having a stopover in a country, does that mean you've technically visited that country then? Because then that means another pin on the map, doesn't it? I think so, because if you breathe the atmosphere's oxygen then surely you visited that country. So like, I'm going to Doha in 10 days time for a stopover. I'll be there for about four hours, three, four hours. I've been to Doha then, Hannah. Ah. Because we're going to stop there and eat something and get on the next plane. So that is technically visiting that country, isn't it? Agree with me? Yeah. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put my map up. So next time you see me, hopefully you'll see a map with loads of pins on it. Still got to order it yet from Amazon. So wait for payday and then I'll order that. Oh, anybody else notice though, when it's payday, your money just comes in and goes out. It's like, touches your bank and then it's out again. It's like, oh, two grand. Yeah, that's great. And next morning, <laughs> mine, mine is 50 quid. What the flipping hell happened there? <laughs> but then I think, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, shukur alaka. <coughs> but do you know what i was just saying to this my, uh, to my auntie earlier on that came living in england is becoming like an it's it's difficult now i want to move somewhere else i want to even move to pakistan but have i got the means to have i have they even got like the technology out there to look after my pacemaker and tune it because every six months i have to go and get my pacemaker tuned because when i go through certain security things and that it just it messes the settings up so 
will if I do move to Pakistan, will they have the facilities there to monitor my pacemaker? Then I think Pakistan jao and then you get admitted in hospital. Yeah, sui leke aaye, ye plaster leke aaye, ye drip leke aaye. Over here, you get it all bought to you. Am I really stupid to jeopardize all that for what bit of pleasure in my life? Why not just keep doing like these little breaks that I do and then come back home to my den? But then I've got the commitments of the rabbits. I can't leave my boys, can I? That's the bloody thing. Then I think, why did I take on so many bloody rabbits? At one point in my life, I, I had 15 rabbits. Can you believe it? Because they just kept having babies and babies and babies. And I was thinking, what the bloody hell's happening? I thought I had all boys. But it turned out there was a girl in one of them, wasn't there? And they were all having babies. Every 30 days, rabbits, female rabbits give babies. Do you know that? Every 30 days. I thought, bloody hell. What, what about her recovery time? Bajari. But I'm glad now. I've got four boys and I've had them all snipped. So no chance of babies so it's like we've got commitments and you know if you've got pets there's a midari isn't it you have to look after them you can't just abandon them and bugger off to whichever country you want to you have to look after them so that's our big responsibility as pet parents right guys this is a very long vlog now 21 minutes i'm waffling an awful lot i'm gonna love you and leave you till the next time please like comment subscribe and share with all your family and friends make me famous on youtube so i can continue to travel the world and build a massive house in dubai and um yeah forget about my horrible wicked past and relationship and people that i've met on the way that i've just been backstabbing and i can just have a little bit of happiness. Please pray, pray for the people in Palestine. Allah Ta'ala make it easy for my Palestinian brothers and sisters. Anyone who is suffering from any problems, such as bills, debt, rishtas for the kids, health issues, um, family quarrels, inheritance issues, all the nonsense that's going on in life, mother and daughter-in-law issues, father and son issues, childcare issues, Sotan issues, double wife issues, six husband issues, whatever issues you've got. Allah Ta'ala is all your affairs. I mean, Allah Ta'ala sab ki ke liye khair aur see I'm having a brain fog. Khair aur afiyat rakhe sab ke liye sukoon dale sab ki zindagi mein aur pyar mahabbat aur ittefaq rehne ki tawfeeq ata farmaye. Ameen sum ameen. And look at me talking like a right auntie Gina because I don't normally do duas in Urdu. I do them in English. Right, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. And yeah, look after yourselves, love one another, spread love. And inshallah, I'll see you in the next one.